Hello and welcome to the Pretty Good Gaming Daily Triple, your no shit gaming news video. That's three news stories in one video with zero faff. All is not well at Bethesda with the future of Doom. Recently, Doom Eternal's composer Mick Gordon expressed his displeasure with Bethesda and id Software for meddling with his music by not using his own mixes. Back in January, Gordon replied to a cover of the track The Only Thing They Fear Is You, saying, Fun fact, all those stupid time signature changes are a result of someone from marketing piecing this track together without any musical knowledge. When the mix quality of a song in Doom Eternal was compared to the same song in Doom 2016, Mick Gordon explained that, I didn't mix those and I wouldn't have done that. You'll be able to spot the small handful of tracks I mixed. In an Instagram private message, he said, I doubt we'll work together again. Now it seems that the composer has separated from the developer id Software in the wake of all this controversy. In a very lengthy Reddit post, executive producer Marty Stratton explained the situation in an open letter. This comes in response to criticism against id's lead audio designer, Chad Mossholder, as well as unacceptable personal attacks on him. Stratton speaks highly of Gordon's talents and assures that he had nearly limitless creative autonomy over music composition and mixing in our recent Doom game. Games. I won't read the whole letter because it's over 2,000 words long, but I'll try to give you the gist. Deadlines needed to be met, but Mick wasn't ready or didn't think what he had was of satisfactory quality. Extensions were given and any requests by Gordon were accommodated, including pay compensation, but in the meantime, someone had to step in to create something that could be put into the official soundtrack so it could be shipped to owners of the collector's edition. Everything Chad Mossholder was working on was what Gordon sent him, but it wasn't the raw sound files because only Gordon had access to those. It was actually Gordon's suggestion that Mossholder Holder's work and his be combined to form a comprehensive soundtrack, and id Software apparently offered to include the additional tracks Gordon was working on as bonuses. It appears that Gordon failed to deliver the agreed upon track several times, but id continued to accommodate his requests for more time until something had to be done to create something which could be released to comply with consumer laws. They had to release the soundtrack at some point because consumer laws in some countries mandate a specific time for refunds to be allowed. Some of what Gordon did submit was also inadequate based on what id was expecting, with many tracks being ambient in nature rather than heavy combat tracks. All of the work that Mossholder actually did seems to have been based on Gordon's own recommendations and advice. Ultimately, as with most situations like this, it just seems to be a communication breakdown where people just aren't talking to each other properly and not really anything to do with the publisher Bethesda as I suggested in my last video, so I guess I was wrong about that. You are wrong, Leonidas. You are wrong! As a result of the eroded trust, Mick Gordon will not be working with id on the upcoming Doom Eternal DLC, however Stratton continued to commend Mick for his work and rare talent. I have huge respect for the work Mick Gordon has produced in both Doom soundtracks and his musical creativity, but this situation does paint him in a pretty bad light. While musical and artistic integrity is hugely important and shouldn't be compromised, if you're contracted to do a job with deadlines, you have to meet those deadlines. If this letter is to be believed, Gordon was afforded every opportunity to get the work done, but ultimately failed to do so and became unreliable. It's certainly possible that Gordon had some extenuating circumstances in his personal life which interfered with his ability to produce the required work, but that's just speculation and we may never know. Equally, he could just have been a massive dick with his ego going to his head, but again, it's just speculation and we don't know. Stratton's letter is actually very reasonable and complimentary of Gordon, so it seems like there is no bad blood on id's end, even though they won't be working together again. It's a shame that this happened and we won't be getting any more Doom music with Mick Gordon, but I'll still listen to whatever music comes with the DLC. DLC and whatever Mick does next. And next up, May the 4th was yesterday, and while for most that's just another day in the calendar, for many it's known as a much more important day, Star Wars Day. The happiest moment of my life. This is often accompanied by celebrations or deals on various Star Wars products, but one that's definitely worth mentioning is Jedi Fallen Order. The third person action adventure game is a decent if flawed experience, but it's still the best Star Wars game in years, even if that's not really saying much. One thing the game has been lacking is the inclusion of additional modes to expand the game's solid parry based combat. To celebrate Star Wars Day, developer Respawn has created a free update for all players on all platforms, which does exactly that by adding combat challenges in addition to several other improvements. This is exactly what the game needs. Needed, as once the story is finished, there's little left to do beyond some collectible cleanup or replaying on harder difficulties. The game's heavy souls like combat is one of the game's strongest assets, so adding a mode solely focused on that is an excellent move by EA and Respawn. The combat challenges appear to be wave based encounters in different environments as you face off against various enemies. Challenges also appear to offer different medals for completing specific bonus tasks, such as taking no damage or not healing. You will also be able to craft your own challenges in the battle grid. The grid. 
a digital frontier. The update will also add more cosmetics for Cal Kestis, as well as his ship, the Stinger Mantis, and his pet droid, BD-1. During a Force vision at one point in the story, players see what Cal would have become had he fallen to the Inquisitors, and that skin, along with Red Saber Crystals, is also now available. You will be able to replay the game with all unlocked cosmetics from the beginning, but this isn't really a new game plus, as you don't get all your abilities. Personally, I'm still hoping for a skin that puts Cal in some classic Jedi robes, but that may well be in this challenge update somewhere. This continued support, even if it is fairly minimal, is a good sign for the future of Jedi Fallen Order, especially since EA announced last week that support for Battlefront 2 is coming to an end, and the fact that this is a free update is exactly the way it should be. This is definitely going to pull me back into the game at least for a while as my completionist tendencies kick in, but is it enough for you? Did you even like Jedi Fallen Order, or did it borrow too much from other games without mastering any of it? Comment below with your thoughts. And finally, Halo 2 is considered by some to be the best Halo game there ever was, while others think the inclusion of the Arbiter in the campaign was a complete misstep. Either way, PC players will be able to enjoy one of the most iconic FPSs of all time tomorrow as Halo 2 comes to Game Pass for PC. Taking a moment out of outstanding charity work or berating you for not getting angry at video games, Ninja took to Twitter to share some old photos of him during his MLG days with Halo 2. The official Twitter account of Xbox Game Pass for PC responded with, Set your alarm for tomorrow morning o'clock. Ninja is currently in bed with Microsoft after they paid him an inordinate amount of money to exclusively stream on their platform Mixer, so I'd say this is a coordinated PR effort but that doesn't change that Halo coming to PC is a good thing. Both Halo 2 and Halo 2 Anniversary are included in the Master Chief Collection which hit PC last year, but with just Halo Reach as more games were to be added over time. Will you be playing Halo 2 when it launches on PC, or are you just too hip to play a game from 2004? How do you do, fellow kids? What? And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this no shit format, go ahead and give the video a like to give it a boost. Hit subscribe and the bell if you want to stay up to date on all future installments. Toss a coin to your YouTuber over at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. That's all for today. I've been Henry Cooper. Bye for now.